Hi there, it's November 26th and we continue our journey through the book of the prophecies of Daniel and we are in Daniel chapter 2 and we're working from verse 24 through to the end of the chapter and then all of chapter 3. Now we saw already in chapter 2 that uh, there has been a challenge by Nebuchadnezzar to the wise men and the magicians and the, uh, the soothsayers of Babylon to tell the king what his dream is and its interpretation. If they don't tell him, they're going to suffer the punishment of death. And Daniel, we saw, uh, asked Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, his friends, to pray. And then the Lord showed him what the king's dream was. And so here in our reading today, he comes to, uh, first of all, to Arioch, the king's advisor, and then Arioch goes to the king and explains that Daniel uh, has an interpretation. He has the vision and the interpretation. So uh, he's invited to come in and he makes it clear to King Nebuchadnezzar that it's not of his wisdom that he has the insight, but actually it is that God, everything is pointing to his God, everything is pointing to the God Most High whom he serves. And he reveals the dream to uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He says, you had the dream of a statue set up and the statue was made up of different materials, the head of gold, chest of silver, then it had brass and it had uh, uh, iron and then clay and iron mixed in, in layers going down to the feet. And uh, he said that this dream was about uh, different ages. It was actually a prophetic dream and it was pointing to different ages that Nebuchadnezzar's age is the age of gold and then coming down through the age of silver, there's the, the Medes and the Persians in, in, in bronze and then there's the, uh, the Greeks who are the, um, the, the mixed ones and perhaps also coming after the Greeks are the separation of the um, the, the, the dynasties uh, at the time or after the time of Alexander which is the iron and clay mixed together and then the, in, Daniel says that in this vision in this dream there's a great stone that comes and strikes the feet of this image which knocks the whole image to smithereens and this image is the kingdom of God this is God's kingdom that is coming that will uh, transcend all of the other kingdoms and this is going to be the kingdom of God which will have no ending which is going to be established on the earth and it, perhaps it's of significance for us that it's in the age of uh, these these divided dynasties um, the the the, um, the the age of Herod that Jesus comes and he announces the kingdom of God uh, because of uh, Daniel's correct revelation King Nebuchadnezzar is overwhelmed and actually um, it's almost worships Daniel, but he puts him in a very high place and also he promotes Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to being governors in the provinces of Babylon as well. And uh, King Nebuchadnezzar also says that no one is allowed to speak against Daniel's God. No one is allowed to say anything against him. So moving on into chapter 3, we come to another very famous, very familiar story in the unfolding of this these stories of these Jewish youths who've been deported. Here uh, a great image is set up on the plain of Dura in Babylon and uh, it's a, probably an image of a god, maybe the image of the god Marduk, the one that was connected with Nebuchadnezzar and it's about 75 feet high, 9 feet wide, made of gold and the proclamation goes out that everyone has to gather and worship this image. And the, the story is told very um, in a very storytelling, a very rhetorical format. So there's quite a lot of repetition. For instance, there's repetition of the list of all the officials who come uh, together to, uh, to gather to worship this image. And then there's uh, a lot of uh, repetition of the, the music that is used, at the, 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 the call for everyone to worship, to bow down and worship. Interestingly enough, uh, for, for the Scots among us, one of the instruments that is mentioned mentioned here um, in this list in the Aramaic is called symphonia which actually comes from the Greek symphonia which means a bagpipe and so uh, one of the, 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 the list of instruments humorously is a bagpipe uh, but this, this list of music are repeated several times in storytelling fashion and of course Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego being obedient to the Most High God will not bow down and bow their knee to the image of another God the king becomes angry when he hears that they refuse to bow down 
uh, and he, they personally encounter the king and say they will not bow down to to this false idol and uh, it, and the penalty for which is being thrown into a, a fiery furnace and they say we'll not bow down our god can solve can save us and then they finally say but even if he doesn't even if god doesn't save us we will still not bow down to your gods for this they are put into the fiery furnace which presumably is something like a, an old lime kiln so that the king can look down and see what's going on in it or can see into it and uh, they are put in and the people who stoke up the furnace uh, stoke it so hot that they themselves are are, are, are killed by the, the heat but they put uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego into the furnace and the story tells us that the king is looking into the furnace and in, rather than just seeing the three he sees a fourth which he says is like a son of God, a bar elahin in the Aramaic, the son of God. And uh, of course, we we understand um, from our understanding of scripture that there were pre-incarnation appearances of the son of God himself. And so this is a picture of this angelic being, this pre-incarnation appearance of Messiah, who's coming and walking with these these three in the fire to protect them. They come out, there's not a sign of anything on them, and this results in their Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's promotion even further in the land of Babylon. And also it results in um, Nebuchadnezzar's blessing of God, and actually the first three verses of chapter 4 in the Aramaic version are connected to this chapter, so they're added to the end of our chapter 3. And this is uh, this is Nebuchadnezzar blessing the God who is the God of all gods, the King of all, the King of all, Lord of all gods, and uh, and saying that there is no other God uh, as powerful as the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's a very real purpose to this story, and that is to show that when we rely on God, when we call upon God, God is able to step in and rescue. But what's really powerful here is the witness that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego have to Nebuchadnezzar says that even if God doesn't rescue us, even if he chooses uh, for this to be the end of our life, this will still be a testimony to the fact that we will not worship other gods. We will not bow down and worship your false idol. As we've seen throughout the prophets and now into Daniel, we need to be keeping our hearts pure and clean towards God, unrivaled exclusively for him. There needs to be nothing else that comes in, particularly in these days when there's so much call for us to just accept others and to tolerate what goes on. We're still called by God to keep him number one, to be exclusively his and to give give worship to no other uh, idols, no other non-gods that are around us. Only God himself is the Lord of all gods, and we choose to continue to worship him, as did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. Have a very good November 26th.